the experience that you kind of went through was that maybe like you were denying a part of who you were uh, mm -hmm. as uh, uh, you know in angelology sorry angelology um along with you know being a medium and so it maybe it was related to to the to the process and understanding of coming out as a queer person because you had to probably come out to your family at, with all this stuff as well and it probably yeah. came with a lot of like fear shame like what are people going to think about me like do you find that there's yeah. a, you know, a relationship between your experience coming out as a queer person as, as well as, you know, all your gifts that you have? Yeah, very similar. A lot of stuff has resurfaced, um, not necessarily right away, but yeah, a lot of feelings of shame and guilt. And uh, I was able to work through that as well and, and realize that, well, I'm, I guess I, I'm coming out again, <laughs> first as queer and then um spiritual so yeah it is a like a coming out process my family's always been really supportive of, of both of who I am and and uh I was really nervous though because I've written a book and in the book it talks about I um talked about my childhood and of course my family so their first response was like well I hope you haven't written anything bad about me and I'm like well, no but of course I had to um really talk to my family and let them know that it, it's something that was guided to me through uh, my spiritual work that, you know, I got to start journaling. So I started journaling and, and then the journaling turned into short stories. And Welcome to the Queer Quest podcast, your beacon of light and sprinkle of glitter in the queer community. I'm your host, Christiana Green, CEO and founder of Queer Quest and a transformation coach for queer individuals. And together, we are embarking on a journey of transformation. Each week, we bring you a new training topic or connect you with visionary queer leaders in healing and coaching, diving deep into conversations that inspire growth, celebrate diversity, and empower you to live authentically. So wherever you are, settle in and let's get ready to unlock the vibrant potential within. This is where your quest begins. Hello, you fabulous souls, and welcome to this week's episode of the Queer Quest podcast. I'm your host, Cristiano Green, the CEO and founder of Queer Quest. And this week on the podcast, we have a very special guest here today, Mark Holton, who is a light leader and also a client of mine from three years ago. So I'm super excited to be catching up with Mark to see what's been going on in his life. Um, welcome to the podcast, Mark. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Thanks for having me on your podcast. I'm You're doing so, well. Thank you. Yeah. So welcome. So glad to have you. Do you want to start by giving the, the listeners an understanding? Because I said you're a light leader. What is a light leader? Well, a light leader is very similar to a light worker. So I work with divine, uh, divine energy. I work with angels and elemental healing. So earth elements, and elementals, so which mermaid energy, unicorns, and spirit animals. So I bring that into my work and into my meditations and my spiritual practices. Lovely. And so let's break that down even a little bit more. So for someone out there who would have no idea what, you know, earth energy or mermaid a, a, a energies or, or, or spirit animals are, Give us a bit of an understanding how you utilize these to support people in, in, in your work. Well, I would have a conversation or have one-on-one um, uh, -on -one with uh, clients or people that are interested and kind of see where they are at in their life. Um, there's different aspects that, that I could work through, um, through Oracle card readings, meditation. I do intuitive uh readings as well so i can do scanning of, of people um through online or in person and just really get a sense of where what's happening in their life um sometimes it's through their body um like certain parts of their body that might some of the energy is not really working for them um it could be anything relationship wise job um, career um, but a lot of it is really intuitively guided so a lot of different aspects will come in uh, angels people from their past so I really kind of bridge that together and kind of do like a, a life 
um, broad um, kind of picture for them. Yeah, I am also a, a medium. So if I have pictures or see pictures of people, I can get a sense of where stuff will come through. So really a lot of it, some of it is um, based on conversation, but a lot of it is intuitively guided. So just whatever comes through, uh, through me or channel through me. And then I give that back to the, to the person. Wow. If that makes sense. <laughs> no, it makes complete sense to me. And I trust that the people out there listening to this can, can make sense of that as well. So tell us, you know, you're a medium, you're, 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 you're connected to spirits, you're connected to different elements in the world. Where do you find these gifts? How do they come to you? Tell us a bit of a journey backstory of like your experiences early on seeing these things and then how that affected you as a, as a young queer person. Well, uh, from a very early age, um, say around five to seven years old, I first started communicating and seeing, um, feeling angels. Um, a lot of my friends, including my family, I would see their auras and their energy around them. So different colors of light. Um, but didn't really think too much of it. I, at that time, it really kind of scared me a bit. I kind of pushed it away, but it always followed me regardless, sometimes more intensity than, than other times, but always very, um, joyful and peaceful. Usually it's when crisis or chaos or, um, so a lot of the times they would appear without me even asking for them or giving permission. Uh, so it's really helped me from a young age. And then I really started um, using my abilities and learning more. So I, I've been seven years in angelology and just really studied um, different aspects of spirituality that have really helped me. Um, and a lot of it has come quite naturally to me. So I really accepted that I had gifts. My grandma, uh, was very spiritual, but also was, um, guided. So I guess it runs in our, our family. Um, but everybody has the ability to speak to spirit and to really change your life. It's just getting over the the different barriers are around it because some people you know it's um for some people it's really strange and even i well i don't have a problem talking about it or even working with it it's helped me so much but I'll, some people really push away and i guess that's part of the reason why it's taken me some time to to really open as a and accepting as a profession but it's also it's it's helped me um definitely when I was coming out and, and as a queer person, it really, um, heightens everything. Like it, I, it puts a lot of things in perspective when I look back. Um, yeah, it's been really a beautiful experience for me and I'm really proud that I'm able to help people, um, around the world that are, uh, you know, reaching out. And yeah, it's been really good for me. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. And so it sounds like from what I'm hearing, you can maybe confirm this or tell me a little bit more about is that the experience that you kind of went through was that maybe like you were denying a part of who you were uh, mm -hmm. as, uh, uh, you know, in angelology, sorry, angelology, um, along with, you know, being a medium. And so it, maybe it was related to, to, the, to the process and understanding of coming out as a queer person, because you had to probably come out to your family with all this stuff as well. And it probably yeah. came with a lot of like fear, shame, like what are people going to think about me? Like, do you find that there's yeah. a, you know, a relationship between your experience coming out as a queer person as, as well as, you know, all your gifts that you have? Yeah, very similar. A lot of stuff has resurfaced, um, not necessarily right away, but yeah, a lot of feelings of shame and guilt. And uh, I was able to work through that as well and, and realize that, well, I guess I, I'm coming out again, <laughs> first as queer and then um, spiritual. So yeah, it is a, like a coming out process. My family's always been really supportive of, of both of who I am and 
And uh, I was really nervous, though, because I've written a book. And in the book, it talks about, I um, talked about my childhood and, of course, my family. So their first response was like, well, I hope you haven't written anything bad about me. And I'm like, well, no. But, of course, I had to um, really talk to my family and let them know that it, it's something that was guided to me through uh, my spiritual work that, you know, got to start journaling. So I started journaling and and then the journaling turned into short stories and ended up um, creating a book out of my different experiences growing up and also my journey in healthcare as well. So because yeah, you also it, are, it was, you've been a nurse for a long time and now you kind of work in hospice as end of life, right? That's a, the yeah, other part of what yeah. you do, yeah? I, well, I work as a nurse aide or, or care aide, um, I, or I guess in Australia and UK, they call it a carer. So um, yeah, I've done that for 15 years and really, really, um, that's when a lot of my spirit guides would speak to me was through different experiences in, in um healthcare profession and uh yeah it's really helped me develop my skills both professionally in healthcare and also professionally um in my spiritual work yeah so and, and kind of more so like in it, they, they feel like they go hand in hand and that you're kind of yeah. doing the work that you're doing while you're being in hospice and supporting mm -hmm. these people at their end of life um, mm -hmm. along with being able to, like I said, hone your skills and, and do it for your healing practice that you have, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's very rewarding. I really enjoy hospice as well. So yeah, it really ties in together and, um, yeah, it's, it's been really rewarding. I've only been in, in hospice for a couple of years now. So good. Nice. I hear that. And uh, I think there are so many people out there that I speak to in the queer community that get into healthcare and supporting other people. And I think, you know, as queer people, we've gone through periods of our life where we maybe feel like, you know, we wish there were some people that could help us through what we were going through. So I find mm -hmm. that it's no wonder that there's a lot of people out there in our community who, who are so wanting to give back and help other people because what well, in, in whatever way that they choose to because i think that there's this this desire to, to support and help and and really you know be there for others definitely yeah it's it's been really rewarding for me and i know it is rewarding for a lot of people nice so so you've written a book mm -hmm. tell yes. us a little bit more about this book that you have and you know, how it can support someone, like, and how would they, how would, like, what would someone be looking for if they were to get this book and say, I'm picking up this book for the first time. What, what am I aiming to get from this book? Uh, well, the name of my book is Life Lessons, Inspiring Stories of Faith, Family, and Friendship. So in each chapter, I, I talk about all those, the different family experiences, life experiences, um, faith, and, and friendship. But in each chapter, I give examples of different life lessons that I've learned and also different lessons that people, um, if they feel called to read the book, that they can take away from it and they could apply into uh, their own life. So, yeah, everything from like breath work, meditation um, to just how to, to communicate with uh, divine energy and how they can bring some of the practices into their life they're, if they are wanting to. Okay, so nice. That, yeah, yeah. So there's a takeaway from each chapter in, in the book and it's a short story book. So it's, it's an easy read and I wanted to keep it really simple for my first book. So it, yeah, it's worked out quite well and I'm really proud of it and, and really happy with uh, the end results and yeah. yeah i'm happy to hear that um you should thank be you. proud of that for sure now thank you listeners out here might be going on and 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 figuring like he's talking about connecting to divine energy i'm trying to connect to myself i you know i want to try to connect more to myself i i struggle like i hear that all these people can can be healers they have spirit animals they have all these different things but i never ever get that stuff 
how can you like what can you say to someone listening out there as some advice for someone who's really trying to maybe become more spiritual or wants to connect more to this or would love to be able to connect to their spirits the spirit guides or medium or whatever it is give us like a little bit of what what you think would be helpful for for a listener out there in that position well a lot of it has to do with um well, some of it's self-awareness, which you learn any, anyways throughout life and, and in spiritual work. Uh, but a lot of it to start with is just being really gentle with yourself, um, how your ego and your inner voice speaks to you and how you respond um, is, is really the first step. Uh, because usually when, well, from my experiences too, when you're quite angry or myself at times, um, it's the lowest form of energy really is when your jealousy and anger really depletes you like emotionally and any energy. So anything that's coming in that, that, you know, they still will come in and help you, of course, but just, it's, it's really learning how, what energy works for you and how to, it's during, during the calmer moments, you know, when you're really gentle with yourself and asking, you know, asking either meditation or prayer. If uh, some people find meditation really hard to do, and even some people find praying what to, is um, difficult, but just to really simplify it, to really start with uh, um, a simple meditation. I do mirror work in the morning and have, um, you know, a, a gratitude journal. And, and in the mirror, it's, it's, for me in the beginning, it was really difficult um because you you would say the um gratitude to yourself in the mirror you know saying i love you you know mark i love you you know i'm you know whatever you're feeling i know i'm loved i feel loved i'm happy and a lot of emotion will come through that way and there's just simple exercises i talk about it in my book as an exercise and you feel like you'll feel um, what comes through and, and then starting to feel those emotions and to feel the support and the love that comes through through your meditation or even speaking is, is connecting to divine energy. Um, for some people, it happens almost immediately. Um, for me, it's through music and just being really quiet, either sitting in in nature and, and doing a meditation. Um, but music can connect me um, almost immediately. And it can be any type of music, but usually softer music or quieter music really helps me connect to um, all my senses and uh, to divine energy. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like what you're saying is basically someone just needs to really find whatever it is that really quietens them, quietens their mind, gets them into, I guess, you know, a nice state. And mm -hmm. that's a great way for them to start to connect, whether that's through meditation, whether that's through prayer, whether that's through mm -hmm. mirror work, whether that's through listening to some music, going out in nature for a nice walk. Those kinds yeah. of things are going to be helpful for people who are really trying to, you know, firstly get in touch with their own spirituality, but then hopefully go on the journey of connecting to their spirit guides or, or whatever yeah. they're trying to connect to. Yeah. And, and calling on them, um, reaching out to them through med through your meditation, you know, the, our angels and divine energy will help us if we give them permission. So during your meditation, if you allow them to, to help you, then they certainly will. So it's first of all, recognizing what it feels, the feelings that you're feeling and being open to saying, you know, uh, guardian angel, you know, my guardian angel, I give you permission to help me or to guide me. And thank you. Um, a lot of it really works with gratitude and being thankful because that really heightens the energy. It's thank you angels for reminding me what I needed to know. And you will get lessons and answers through your meditation. Like it, you may not get it right away, but you, you know, if you start journaling or after that, doing a meditation, um, like I said, being in nature or something, it will come to you 
So the answers and they're always will help you if you give permission. Yeah. Okay. Nice. And so for people out there who've never meditated before, you'll mm -hmm. sound like someone who does it on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tips and tricks for people out there who are trying to learn how to meditate? Maybe they want to give it a try, but may, or maybe they've tried it in the past and, oh, you know, cause I, I know a lot of people who, who go, oh, I've just tried it. And I go, how many times have you tried it? Once it didn't work. So have you got some tips and tricks for someone who really wants to give it a go and really try to learn how to do it properly? Yeah. Um, for me, the meditations that don't have a lot of talking, <laughs> Although the ones that I've created, I have a little bit of both. Um, just because it gives you how to sit in stillness and quiet. Um, so something, there's so many on YouTube or on Spotify or whatever music you uh, connect with um, that can be really helpful. Just something that has just music. Uh, I like to do the different frequencies as well especially for sleeping and relaxing before bed uh and you just listen to the different frequencies of sound and a lot of the higher vibration and frequencies are what um are related to divine energy as well so that is something that's simple that you could listen to where it's just different sounds it's simple it is getting you in a meditative state which uh, people could find or relate to um, more relaxing. And then it really quiets your mind. Uh, and then moving on to like a, a guided meditation nice. where there's someone speaking to you uh, and you're guided on like a, a story or a, a journey. Which yeah, I find that the, helpful, for, yeah. I think I find for the newbies, what I would recommend is start with a guided meditation where you, you just mm -hmm. have to sit there and listen to what they're saying because they usually can instruct you and that's quite helpful yeah. and that's usually you know I, I create a meditation weekly for mm -hmm. for people to listen to on this podcast as a bonus and also on youtube and i find that like for, for 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 people who are new it's a great way for them to to just listen to someone else kind of guiding you on the journey that you're going on and usually they're only around 10 minutes and it just yeah. makes you feel like, okay, this is simple, it's easy. I can find 10 minutes to do those things as well. So we're going to have, go off and take a quick break, but we'll be back in just a moment with Mark and uh, we'll continue this great conversation. In a world where every journey is unique, one path shines brightly for the queer community. Introducing QueerQuest, the first of its kind personal development platform designed exclusively for us by us. At QueerQuest, we understand the multifaceted journey of queer identity. That's why we've created a space where you can explore, learn, and grow with the guidance of queer experts from around the globe. Whether you're seeking to enhance your physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual well-being, QueerQuest is your gateway to transformation. Imagine embarking on quests tailored to your journey of self-discovery, finding community, and unlocking your queer excellence. QueerQuest offers online courses, coaching programs, and soon workshops, seminars, retreats, and festivals, all designed to empower you to live your best life. Ready to start your adventure? Join us at www.queerquest.vip to become part of a movement towards personal and collective greatness. Sign up today to join the waitlist and be the first to know when we launch. QueerQuest, where your journey of self-discovery and transformation begins. Don't just dream of a life filled with pride and purpose. Make it your reality with QueerQuest. Visit www.queerquest.vip now. Your quest awaits. We are back with Mark Holton. And before the break, we were talking about meditations. And of course, look, we were sharing, you know, probably some tips and tricks around meditation so that, you know, listeners out there who are trying for the first time, really were trying to maybe connect to their spirituality, connect to the spirit guides, try to maybe, like I said, start to really go on a deeper journey you know like i said start with a guided meditation and then move your way up to like just sounds and and, and frequency ones because again they're going to help you to raise your vibration raise your state and then that's probably when you're going to be in an area to start receiving some of the messages that maybe you've been asking to get some support on yep that's that's perfect exactly good little summary there <laughs> yeah 
So I know, I know, of course, being, you know, your coach back in the day that you obviously have gone through, you know, a bit of a transformation. And, and, and I know that, you know, back then you weren't as ready as you are now to maybe start to take the next step in your life, in your career. So mm-hmm. I'd love to, for you to share with people because there are so many people out there who probably have some sort of a gift and maybe they're holding themselves back from doing something about it out of fear, out of shame, out of whatever emotion that they're, they're actually feeling. Do you want to share a bit about your journey of where you've come from to where you are now in relation to overcoming your own negative talk, your own self-doubt, your own fears? Sure. Um, yeah, well, I used to always listen to the negative, like a lot, my inner ego um can be quite (laughs) what's that the inner yeah yeah Yeah. um but I would always listen to that and then that would follow me into um you know friendships and just people that I hung around so it was always what I would hear because um I guess some of the people that I, I would be hanging around weren't the best influence for me, but were very similar to the energy that I was putting out um, and often put me in different situations that were not the best for for me. Um, But at that point, I didn't really care. Like I, my self-esteem was very low and I didn't really care if people disrespected me. You know, I let people kind of walk all over me in a sense, which is a horrible feeling. Mm. Um, But I learned to respect myself more and love myself. And when you start learning self-love, your whole outlook changes. And how would you say you you went and learned that stuff? Because, you know, how how do you learn self-love? How did you do it specifically? How I did it was removing the things in my life that were causing such chaos um people um places that i would go to um really people, places things that things. i didn't really gravitate to anymore and just really let them go so really letting go of the past um just spending a lot of time by myself and in nature and really kind of doing things that really invigorate me and things that I enjoy um, like it could be um, simple things didn't have to be elaborate or anything and then once I got more comfortable being by myself I was more comfortable being around people more you know I the I didn't care what people would think or I was always questioning in my mind what people thought of me or what people would think as well as the negative self-talk. So it was really exhausting. So what, once I made some changes, my energy changed. It wasn't so exhausting all the time, but being a, a light leader and energy um, worker or healer, um, I'm learning to, to really, um, watch my energy and and not necessarily protect myself but make sure that i'm not completely depleted because that would happen all the time when i was around such negativity because she would be exhausted all the time and in my work now i have to be uh careful i do a lot of um energy clearing all the time like daily because um with end of life it takes a lot. It's, it, there's a emotional aspect. Um, you know, it's, it's the physical and emotional. So when you make connections with people and the guests that I care for, you're making those emotional connections. You're really getting to know them and, and such on a, a really spiritual can be spiritual level, but you, you really get to know someone quite personally because, well, there it's, it's very personal experience. Everyone's experience is different, but that can be really draining, especially for someone like me. So I have learned to really be careful and just clearing my energy. And that's easier to do once you are kind of more 
learning about yourself. You le yeah, you have to be open to um, ex kind of exploring how to better yourself, self-improvement. Like you um, talk a lot about that in your work as well with your coaching and and how um, to differentiate between that and how to get through limited beliefs what that can turn up anytime really. Um, I've learned to be better at um, not, yeah, better at being more supportive of myself and not relying on the, the inner voices that aren't helpful and the limiting beliefs, which yeah, are, are, are really the beginning of, of uh, can be, can really drag you down too. And that's what's happened to me in the last couple of years as well. Like, you know, you get to a certain point and, and everything's good, but you always sometimes think the, okay, now it's good. When is everything going to crash and burn? Well, it doesn't have to be that way, but I'm learning to not allow that to really um, function in my life. So, and it's been, it's been hard, but I'm much better at um, dealing with, with that, those types of emotions and, and feeling them and letting them out. If I need to cry, then, then cry. I mean, we cry quite often at work, but we also laugh and there's lots of laughter and humor and um, yeah, you're very close with my coworkers and stuff. So I'm really excited to hang up my scrubs, um, but I know that I would, I can really feel it's, it's, a, it's a huge part of me that I would do it casually or as a volunteer um, uh, position or volunteer experience. And yeah, I'm ready for the next level of, of uh, helping people, but on a, a different, a little bit different way, but not really. Um, helping people spiritually um, is something that I've always been doing for a long time, but didn't re realize it till the last few years. So. Yeah, I love that. And I love that you say that even though you're moving away from and, and, and about to give up your scrubs and at some point in the future that you still mm -hmm. want to be doing it because it, you feel like it's a part of who you are. It's a big part of your life. And uh, yeah. of course that means that you get so much out of giving and supporting people in their, in their times of need, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. It's been really rewarding. Great. So I've got a, a curious question for you because like I said, you, you've had these gifts for a long time. You know that you can connect more to your, your spirituality, your spirit guides, and you can, to the divine energy. How come you haven't got to where you wanted to be sooner in life? If you were so able to connect to all of this stuff, right? Because like I said, I'm sure there are people out there going like, if, you, if you're, you're so great and you can tap into all this stuff, how come you haven't got a bazillion dollars? How come you haven't got X, Y, Z? Tell people how it works in reality, because I'm sure there are some people out there thinking like, you know, I, if I can tap into that, I, I'd be unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, it's almost like a superpower, I guess, uh, in a sense. Um, well, for, for everyone has the ability to do that as well, like I mentioned, um, but it's been really difficult because a lot of the negative will try and pull you down. Like they, they, a lot of the negative and darkness, you have to be in darkness in order to get to light. Um, and the light becomes stronger once you work through that. But I mean, it will always turn up. I mean, fear will resurface, but it's how you handle it. Uh, a lot of it is taking everything on because I, I feel emotions of people. So that's what light workers do is they feel the emotions of people. Um, even watching certain movies, like if there's a character in a movie where they are being um, made fun of or teased or ridiculed or hurt, I really feel that quite deeply. And so that's why there's certain a lot of shows I don't really watch a whole lot of TV anymore just because it's really uncomfortable for me. Um, but I mean, I'd feel that in everyday life. Um, if I'm at a party or something, you know, you walk in the room and you feel the energy of the room, which, you know, people say, uh, well, you, yeah, you would feel the energy of ev 
everything. Like it could be on the news or, you know, I don't watch news really because of that. Um, so a lot of it has been really hard because you have to navigate that in your life. And it's always been a blessing though. I've always looked at it as a blessing where some people at that time haven't, um, but it is. And it's just really been difficult because of navigating that you have to, I mean, I've had to um, really learn how to um, have my gifts in the world and to live my daily life. I mean, some people, it becomes too much where they try and push it away, um, but it never goes away. It just usually will resurface in a more stronger way because that once you're being guided of what your soul purpose is, uh, yeah, you the the uh, my knowledge and um, I learn more because I'm here to help people or guide people. Not necessarily help people, but guide people. And once you really come to terms with uh, accepting who you are as a whole person, then then a lot is cleared away where you can start living your life and start focusing on on what you want to do and and not be so pulled down which that's why that's why i, I everyone has um there's a a point or a, a time divine timing if you've heard the saying it is for a reason because everyone's on a different journey and a different path and a lot if I compare myself to other people, which, um, yeah, I've done before that. We're totally human. Everyone takes, does. That's yeah. normal. Everyone like, that's, does. Yeah. That's, that's um, like, you know. But that totally takes away everything that you're striving for and everything that you're working for. Um, so me, I've learned to just take little steps forward and just to be doing things I enjoy and working a little bit towards, you know, what I want to do professionally and and I've done that and so many changes have come into my life that I would never think possible uh, when you talk about um well money or um is how you the energy around it because it's also energy uh yeah. you have to love yourself but you also have to be okay to to love abundance and prosperity and it's not always to do with the money aspect it's once you love yourself and love what you're doing and love helping people then so many things open up for you and in spiritual energy you know our angels and divine guidance they want us to be abundant they want us to have prosperity they want to see us you know be successful and and have lots of prosperity where we can give back to people you know give back to community but be able to to really make a difference in your life and to help people and not everyone does that i mean everyone's different everyone's mindset's different and some people are you know they it's no it's not a bad thing to live um you know i try and live my life um you know really uh minimalist way but also i don't feel bad if 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 i want to go on a trip or something like a lot of it is getting over that negativity where I don't deserve that. Like a lot of that would come up for me, especially to do even changing my profession and, you know, uh, charging clients and things like that. You know, your self-worth is, is worth a lot and integrity yeah. and, and uh, yeah, once you, people work through that then they their whole outlook on abundance and and money and things changes so i see and yeah I, it totally does as you like i said as you evolve as you work through your own things again you start to increase your self-worth your self-confidence mm -hmm. you start to see that you're that you're having a positive impact in other people you do start yeah. to realize that yes this is valuable and i need to raise my raise things up in order for me to feel that what I'm doing is, is a value as well. And that the people who are receiving it actually take it on as well. Cause you know, there is, the, 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 there's this thing as well of, you know, 
giving away what you do for free, a lot of people don't see it the same way as someone who would pay, you know, good money for it because the person who's paying the good money has invested their time and their energy into it because literally money is energy. So they're more invested in it and they're more likely to go and do the things and get the results from it because they've actually put that investment in. But again, if you go and start to, to do these readings for free, the, the people that take them for free are, are, are the people who, who probably in most cases, We'll hear it, we'll walk off the next day, we'll, we'll not do anything that has come from it. And so they're not going to get any of the results, and I'm talking quite broadly, because they're not as invested in doing it, in it as well, because it was for free. The value of it is not, I didn't have to give you anything, none of my energy needed to be transferred into this experience. So for me, it, it's just, a, you know, it's a great piece of thing to hear, but, you know, I'll go off in my own merry way as well, you know? Right. Yeah, you've uh, described it perfectly. It's mm. Exactly right. So what, there's going to be people out there who are, who are saying like, you know, if I can hear there's all these great messages from my angels, what about some negative energy coming in and telling me what to do? What can I, well, is there going to be times where I'm told to do something and it's from a negative space? What do you say to people out there who are, who are thinking, you know, those kinds of thoughts as well? Uh, well, a lot of that happens. I know just from working with different, um, spiritual modalities that also some entities come into play that are not very nice, but a lot of that is Hollywood though. Um, I mean, nothing can harm you unless you allow them to. And in that regard is meaning, even if you do, they still, won't physically harm you um but they can try and really stir things up which i've had happen influence you um, into doing things which is i guess where i'm coming from is, is like okay yeah. so if you get if, if you can hear both sides of it how can you then trust that what you're saying is the right thing for you to do like you're getting some oh, guidance. Well, how would you then go, okay, look, I'm getting this. How do I know this is pure for me? And then if I don't do this, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to, something's going to happen wrong, you know, like, because there are a lot of people who go through self-doubt as you've shared in your mm -hmm. journey, you've went through it as well. I think it's a human experience. What do you say to people there? How is someone going to know that this thing is actually coming from a pure place? My spirit animals are really guiding me down this path. I need to follow it. And it's going to be really good for me if I do. They'll feel the difference um they'll feel obviously the negative um from a darker energy and what they're feeling when they're kind of lost or angry or jealousy or anything like that so they'll know what that feels like and then when they are um channeling or they are meditating or communicating with their spirit guides they may not even know who their spirit guides are at that time, but they'll still come in regardless if you have met them um, yet or not. Just the feeling that you feel, like you feel a really strong sense of love. Um, you can feel warmth on either like your arms or your shoulders, like you're standing in the sunshine, like you're standing on a beach um, with your back to the sun. That's one feeling is is that you suddenly have a sense of warmth come right over you almost that it's you break out into a sweat almost but it's like a i guess when your people get flushed or um you know they're running or working out and you feel warm it's kind of like that and just what comes into your your field of energy, like what comes into your mind and what you're feeling, you'll know right away. Like there's, there, it's such a strong sense and, and feeling that you'll know, okay, my angels are communicating with me. Um, sometimes the, the sun will get brighter, um, which happens a lot for me. And I just step into the, the light and just feel the love and it feels good and the warmth and you know i'll say a prayer or or just a hello even uh but then i i'll know who's communicating with me either a grandmother or loved one or or someone you know that I, that quite often will be someone that i cared for in the past 
uh, which is really nice. Um, and you'll know that will come up for you when you're in times of need or, or struggling or not feeling the greatest. Um, th that's how you know, it is once you experience that for like the first time, uh, you'll know all the time, like from then on forward, uh, that you're communicating with um, and, um, love energy or love beings, beings of light, which are angels. That are more pure, that are coming from a pure place. Yeah, yeah. You'll you'll feel it. Either you feel it, sometimes you'll hear it. Um, sometimes you might uh, smell, like often I sometimes will smell chocolate chip cookies all the time. So I know that my grandparents or my grandma, if I'm thinking of my grandma and can really smell that, I'm like, where's that coming from? Well, then I know that my grandma's in the room or, or she, you know, thinking of me or is trying to communicate with me. Beautiful. Yeah, I love that. So mm -hmm. what would you say to someone out there? This is their first time hearing about this kind of thing. They want to go and connect. They want to try to do it. What would, would you say is the first step that someone should take towards it? Like I said, there's so many things that someone can do, meditation, breath work, all of these different things. What for someone who's really trying to first step into their first journey of spirituality, what would you say, what would you give as, as a piece of advice to someone who's, who's, who's coming to you saying, I want to be, I want to tap in and see what this whole spirituality thing's all about. <laughs> uh, be open to it. Um, be wanting to learn. So there's a lot, many books out there um, just on self-help books, but also spiritual, um, give all kinds of things, which is good. And just, that could be a start. You just uh, start reading or listening to audiobooks. Um, just really being open to it. Uh, you have to kind of, uh, yeah, it takes a lot. For a lot of years, I pushed it away, even when I was all the way from seven years old, all the way to my early 20s, like a long time. Um it take yeah it took me a long time to really accept who i am as a queer person but also as a spiritual person so just being open to learning and being have a if it all depends if you want to not if some people that they might be kind of curious just to see what it's all about which is great um other people they may want to learn how to you know how to channel their energy how to um you know, be also be a light worker or a light leader and how to do that, which is just a process of, but it starts with really accepting and being open to, to learning and to um, allowing, you know, loving yourself. Like uh, when people come out as, as uh, queer or LGBTQ. Um, yeah just just being really open, yeah, open to, to learning new things yeah yeah nice but one final question for you so you've you like i said you've come out of the closet as both a queer person and now as like i said a light leader you're really open with with your gifts how has that affected your life and your relationships as a queer person finding love friendships etc give a, people an understanding of what's like yeah what's what, what's your life like as, as a queer person and as a, as a, as a light leader as well? Um, it's been really rewarding because my friendships have changed. I mean, I still am friends with, with people that I grew up with and, and living in a smaller community, I really got a chance to get to know people and I'm just more um, people orientated. I mean, I do like to spend time myself, of course, but um just more relaxed, more myself. And, and just that's really helped me quite a bit. Um, I've learned that I gravitate to, to people that are similar to me, but also it's based on their energy relationship wise. Yeah. It, it's um, in the past, it's been difficult because I didn't care. I didn't have respect for myself. So didn't care if people were respectful to me, even in relationship, but relationship that's really important but people will learn that um yeah i have to be on the same 
um, energetic level. Um, it doesn't mean necessarily education wise or anything. It's just how I feel around them and how they feel around me. And when it's um, a match, it's, it's really incredible. It's really magical. And everyone feels that when you're with, um, you know, someone that you love. I know you feel that with your partner um, and many people, not just um, queer people, but people in general, when, you know, they've met the one and it's when, yeah, you're really connected um, mentally, physically, spiritually, like all the, all the things that people need in, in their life um, is, yeah, you know, <laughs> like you can finish each other's sentences like some people do, or you can sit in silence and just enjoy each other's company and, and just be okay with um, yourself and with them. Like there's no judgment. There's no all the drama that comes with um, some relationships, I guess. I mean, it's, it's as we grow older too, but energetically yeah it has to be someone that I'm in, in alignment with I see well thanks for sharing that there um with with, uh, with people as well mm -hmm. so it's been a pleasure having you on uh, the podcast today Mark uh, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story and your gifts with uh, um, everyone out here thank if someone's you. curious about you know what you do or like you know finding out more about this as well is there a way that people can contact you? Have you got anything coming up that you can share with uh, with, with the audience? Yeah, um, I will be launching my first course uh, program online, and it's to do with uh, spirit animals and animal communication. Uh, so I have that coming up. I also do one-on-one -on -one with clients, um, do mini uh, angel oracle card readings. I do can be contacted on instagram so my instagram is mark m-a-r-k underscore holton underscore and it will bring up information on how to book through me or to uh, contact me and and i can contact you directly through through instagram Beautiful. Oh, great. So Instagram is the place to go for Mark Holton. If you're wanting to find out anything more about what he does. Um, and I'm sure you share some cool stuff on there as well. Yes. Yes, I do. Great. Well, thank you again for coming on here. It's been a great episode. Everyone else, if you've got any questions, any feedback, any comments, you know how to reach out to me on social media, or you can comment below, depending on where you are listening to or watching this on. And I'll be back here next week with another episode of the Queer Quest podcast. Until then, always remember that you've got this and I've got you. Bye for now. Are you ready to embark on a transformative journey towards love and happiness? Introducing the 21 Day Gaiman's Guide to Love and Happiness. This isn't just a course, it's a pathway to discovering your true self, overcoming challenges and embracing happiness. Join hundreds of gay men who found joy and freedom. Learn from Cristiano Green, a coach with 20 years experience and a journey like yours. For a limited time, get this life-changing course at 75% off with a 100% risk-free guarantee. There's nothing to lose, but so much to gain. Your new life is just a click away. Enroll in the 21-day Gay Man's Guide to Love and Happiness today. Visit theglobalpridecollective.com and start your journey towards a happier, more fulfilled you.